New messages, TikTok, coffee, double shot extra sugar, muffin, gluten-free, YouTube, cigarettes, bacon double cheeseburger, would you like fries with that? Supersized soft drink, Adderall, Snapchat, Instagram, OnlyFans, soda cans, cheese stuffed, pizza crust delivered to your door, Discord, Red Bull, multiplayer microtransaction, loot box, binge watchable Netflix show, ambient, late night, bottomless social media feed. Welcome to the Dopamine Nation. For the first time in history, we humans live under the strange circumstances where there's too much of everything. For every itch you have, there's apps, substances, and pills to help you scratch it and then some. We're in this weird situation where everybody's addicted, usually to multiple things, and it's basically normal, but it's not exactly making us happy. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the three most important insights I took away from the book Dopamine Nation by Dr. Anna Lemke. Keep watching if you want to discover why in today's world everyone's dopamine system is getting deep fried and what you can do to regain balance and improve your mental health. Dopamine is the motivation hormone. It's the thing that drives us to go do things. It's what drives us to go get food when we're hungry, to go find a mate, to go out and explore. The problem is that this is being hijacked and we're getting too much reward too quickly. What's supposed to happen is that you feel the motivation to get food, let's say, and then there's some kind of work and some project in getting that food and then you get the reward. Whereas now, the reward is usually instant. So why is that a problem? It sounds like a good thing, right? Dr. Anna Lemke uses a model in the book that helps explain where the problem comes in. Imagine a seesaw that represents the mental health, your mental balance, so to speak. And we have pain on the one side and pleasure on the other side. Now imagine that you're doing something that is pleasurable, that is rewarding, and it tips the balance of that seesaw towards the pleasure side. As a natural mechanism, your body will always try to return to balance. So in a way you can imagine that as a result of you piling onto the pleasure side, your brain will pile some counterweights onto the pain side and you'll eventually return to balance. And this is just how it is, isn't it? It's like our emotional states are not eternal. So imagine that you have a nice conversation with a friend of yours, you feel good, half an hour later you still feel good, but you know, two hours later you're back to normal. This is the seesaw rebalancing itself to baseline. But here's the problem. When we get large spikes of highly rewarding things too quickly, the brain overreacts. So when you eat super sugary junk food or you get the hyper stimulation of scrolling through a super engaging feed on social media, what happens? It's like you're piling a lot onto the pleasure side very, very quickly. Your body trying to regain balance essentially overcompensates, it goes, uh oh, that's too much, too fast. Let's really pile on to the pain side. And as a result of that, instead of smoothly returning to a balanced state, you will actually feel worse after strong stimulation. So anything that makes you feel really good really fast makes you feel worse afterwards. And here comes the problem, because now you feel bad and you want to do something again that feels good. So you give yourself another spike of stimulation, another spike of pleasure, and you keep perpetuating the problem. And just to be clear, when we talk about pleasure and pain, it doesn't have to be like literal, ouch, I cut my finger kind of pain. It can just be discomfort. It can be dissatisfaction. It can be anxiousness, feeling restless. And the response, the pleasure you see can be something like pulling out your phone and you see some nice posts on TikTok. But it's enough to keep that seesaw going back and forth too much to overstimulate this system. And as a result, you end up essentially setting your baseline too low. Because you're constantly overstimulating the pleasure side, your brain overcompensates and your normal state becomes relatively unpleasant. This is a simple explanation for why the overuse of all these pleasurable and stimulating things leads to mental health issues. An example from the book is one of Dr. Lemke's patients who started smoking weed in order to deal with anxiety. And over time, she smoked more and more weed and she felt more and more anxious. And the logic goes, well, weed is what helps me cope with the anxiety. And since I'm more anxious, I need to smoke more. But the same effect is in play here. The weed is essentially too strong of a stimulus and it leads to even more anxiety as soon as the effects wear off. What ends up happening with addicts is that they need to use their substance just to feel normal. Whereas in the beginning, you use the substance to feel better than normal. Eventually you need it just to cope. And this can be true of something like weed and other substances. It can also be true of social media use. It can be true of coffee. How many people do you know who need coffee just to feel a normal level of awakeness? So that's the first key idea. 
the seesaw and your body seeking balance. The second point goes into, well, what do we do about it? Obviously, we don't want to be in this state where we're constantly feeling worse than normal and constantly having to consume something in order to return to baseline. So what's the fix? Here, I really appreciate the Dopamine Nation book for telling us the truth, even though we don't want to hear it. Dr. Lemke has a process for her patients who struggle with addiction that she explains in the book. And the key step in this process is abstinence. So in order to kick the habit, you need to stop doing it which is bad news, but it gets worse. You need to stop doing it for at least 30 days. So say you're addicted to social media, you've been using your phone too much, you feel kind of lonely and anxious, you've identified this as a problem and you go, okay, it would be better for me to do less of this. Unfortunately, in order to reset that balance in your brain, you have to quit for 30 days. Of course, this is not what anyone wants to hear. We would like to have a quicker fix. We would like to be able to just go to a lower dose, maybe healthier kind of use right away. And you might even find that, you know, if you do a two day detox or something, you might find that you already feel better. But the problem is you haven't actually done anything to address the underlying habit and issue. A 24 hour detox, a two day detox, even a 10 day break is just not enough for your brain to rebalance itself and regain a healthy baseline, especially if you have been overusing for years or even decades. In fact, taking a short break can make it even worse, right? If you take a short break of something that you're addicted to, you might overdo it even more when you get back. We don't like an easy solution, but unfortunately going through the experience of withdrawal and struggling with the difficulties of no longer having the thing that's giving you the hit that you so much want is part of the healing process. But there is also interesting and unexpected good news that comes from this same seesaw model that we've now already looked at, which is it works both ways. So if you pile on too much too quickly on the pleasure side, it leads to longer term pain, discomfort, low mental health. But if you give yourself certain kinds of safe pain or adversity, it has the inverse effect. It can lead to longer term pleasure and improved mental health. An example of this is exercise. When you exercise and you really push yourself, you're experiencing a form of pain. You're experiencing a form of discomfort. You have to overcome something that is basically unpleasant. The effect this has on your brain is basically the exact opposite of something like a pleasure spike from eating a candy bar. You're getting a discomfort spike, you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone for a short period of time, and your brain overcompensates by starting to pile onto the pleasure side. And this is why you can generally just feel better and more energetic and happier even hours after an exercise session. Another interesting example of giving yourself these kind of pain spikes in a safe way is cold water exposure. So cold showers or an especially cold water immersion like ice baths. If you've ever done this, you'll know that the experience really is quite painful. It can be difficult to endure even just for a minute or two, but it is a safe kind of pain. Even in very cold water, you can remain for minutes at a time without doing any damage to yourself. And studies have shown that like with exercise, when you take an ice bath, that overcompensation on the pleasure side that your brain does can last for hours. It can last for the majority of the day just from that one experience. So therein lies part of the solution. The, the thing that we want, which, which is we want to feel good, right? We want to feel pleasure. We want to be in a state of positive mental health can be attained in a much more sustainable way. But it's this weird inversion. Whenever we seek the instant gratification, the instant pleasure, it leads to a long-term opposite of what we want. Whereas if we give ourselves the pain, the adversity first, it leads to a long-term effect of what we actually seek. Those are the three main ideas that I took from this book. And what I will implement personally in my life are two things. One is being more deliberate in seeking this kind of safe pain or adversity. This is something I've already done in many ways, but it is really good to understand how this works so that especially on a day when I feel bad, I know now is the time to take a cold shower or to work extra hard in the gym or something like that. I know that this is a tool I can use and it'll be easier to convince myself to do that, to get myself to do the hard thing now that I have a better understanding of what's actually going on in the brain. And the second thing is this idea of the 30 day abstinence. This is something I will use in my own life as an experiment. The way I see it, like I said in the beginning, we live in a world where basically everyone's addicted to all kinds of stuff and we are prone to make excuses about it and say, no, no, I'm not actually addicted. I'm not actually using it too much. Well, you can easily find out 
by abstaining for 30 days. Because think about it, if you're not addicted to something, then not doing it for 30 days should be easy, right? And if it's not easy, then you were addicted and you needed that break. And that's what I encourage you to try out as well. Now, in case you're wondering, what is the book like? Is the book worth reading? Let me just give you my review in a nutshell. I found it an interesting book, but I wished it had more stories and more information about these normal addictions. Most of the stories in the book are from people who have pretty serious levels of addictions. And I think the danger there is that we can read that and be like, oh, that's not me. But in reality, and I think this is something the book could have emphasized more and given more guidance for, it's the small addictions, the seemingly not so serious addictions that are plaguing most of us most of the time. So overall, a good book and an interesting read, but I wish it had been made a bit more applicable to let's say the average Joe who doesn't have a crippling addiction to one substance, but maybe has, you know, five little addictions that are also leading to quite a lot of misery and suffering. If you want to gain an even deeper understanding of how various brain chemicals work and how they affect your life quality and mental health, check out this discussion on the Ikario podcast next. What is your perspective on this, like on this suffering that's going on? Anxiety is a big piece. In general, like many, many people are very stuck in their heads. But the biggest question I get on social media is about overthinking and feeling like there's too many thoughts in their mind. Then I think just general low mood and kind of like apathy, just like no like inner drive. And when we go into this whole dopamine aspect, we're really like depleting this big driving energy we have within us.